All right, so instead of nuke, the first thing I'll do is import the images up. So I'm going to import the original um, ball bounce renders so we can compare them to the new ones. Uh, the new frames are actually still rendering, uh, so I'm going to import just two frames. And I'll import the image sequence for the beauty, which is still rendering. So, even though the frame range should be Let's press S to go to the properties for the project. Frame is from 1 to 240. The full size format uh, is going to be 853 by 480 because that's the size of the renders that I outputted from Maya. So if you press S, you want to make sure that you set this to the correct size. That's a crucial thing because you see how some images that I exported don't have the same size? Um, they can be a pain in the ass. I exported those from the viewport, that's probably why. Um, it, I haven't started back rendering them. It might actually be worth that I go back into Maya and I export them at full resolution, just so we don't have to worry about um, having to re-export them, I mean having to use a reformat and whatnot, because it's probably a conversation for another time. I think this was the first one. Yeah, always make sure that when you export images from here manually, you have the render settings. Okay. So now we can reload them. Oh no, it didn't tell me exporting the same image for both. That's not very smart. Okay, so now we can export these as number two. And then we can reload it. So now you can see the size here is the same for all of them. Cool. So this is our image. Renders coming out pretty well. Now if we go back to our paint over and we look at some of the things that we had promised we would do, we pretty much have all of them except the shaping of this volcano didn't come out nearly as pretty as I hoped it would um, which is a bummer and I think actually now that I'm looking at it we have a lot of contrast here but we have none here so instead of it rendering out a mat like that in this case we actually might need to have a specific pass that separates these two elements so I can color correct that separately. It's kind of a pain in the ass and I wasn't expecting it because I didn't really think about it too hard. But now it's pretty... I think it's going to be important to do that. So we might actually have to uh, create a layer um, specifically for this, like a material specifically for this. So let me duplicate it. And then let me assign the same layer to all of it, this black layer, black material. And then I'm going to take the shader that I use for the volcano, this layer shader, and I'm going to duplicate the shading network. And I'm going to assign this material to the volcano. Now, instead of using these two blinks, I'm going to be using um, a copy of these two shaders. So I'm going to duplicate them. Uh, edit, duplicate, shade network. <coughs> Alright, so what we want to do is have anything here a full color and anything here a full color. But in order to do that, we're going to have to use transparency maps. So, um, let's select this and let's kill 
all of those and let's drag you and let's drag you so now we have these two colors right now what we need is transparency okay so these are the two materials so the transparency we had it coming from this one right So this material we're gonna have this texture onto the out transparency and then we're gonna make sure that the green is what's on top. Okay. And they are combining which is not what I want. Let's see if they actually look like that with render. Alright, so they are combining, which is not what I expected actually. This is unusual. Cool, yeah, that's what I wanted. We got it. So now we just render out this other image as ID03. Cool. Um, am I actually. I think I'm batch rendering. So it's probably going to not batch render that fast, but it's okay. I'm only going to use it, and I'm only going to use one frame of this edit for the demo. Cool. Uh, Alright, so now that we have all the passes that we need, um, and again, sometimes the production needs change as you, as you need to, you know, as you realize that you actually don't have all the passes before you need it. Alright, so first thing let's add more shape onto that so what we're gonna do is use a shuffle node shuffle node and we're gonna take the red portion of this image and use it to create an alpha so if we press A we can see the alpha now is the same as the color pretty much the whole image turned into that so now if you press control and you drag you can drag a whole um, graph. If you press C, you can create a color correct node. And uh, if you press A, you can look at the alpha. So if you select the shuffle and the color correct and press Shift Y, now you can color correct the image inside that alpha. And we definitely want to separate the two. So I'm going to make the volcano overall darker. So I'm going to call this Volcano Overall Down. And then what I'm going to do is inside the same alpha, so I'm going to do IN, stands for inside. So inside the alpha and a Bezier, I'm pressing X and then I'm typing Bezier and pressing OK so that I can do that. So I'm going to copy and paste. Again, so think that pressing Shift Y to connect the alpha to the color correction. I'm gonna say volcano up. And let's make this say 1.5. Press 2 or 1 to see the result of the color correction. Now the alpha is black here because we are doing an in between that and the bezier, which is empty. I haven't made one yet. So now I'm gonna double click on the bezier and press Control Alt here and Control Alt there. And we already have a shape. You can change this to one so that you don't get to see you don't have to see the Bayesian shape. And uh, we probably don't need to animate, so I'll remove the animation. Okay, so you see how we are artificially creating shape that we couldn't get with the lighting. 
we are reshaping it in Nuke. This is particularly useful for elements that don't animate. So in this case, I want to double check that the volcano doesn't change too much. And it doesn't, so I think I'll be fine. I might not even need to animate this base yet, as long as we keep it pretty subtle and soft. If you press Control and drag, you can soften the edges. Okay, and you can change this so it grads a little bit better. All right. Yeah, I actually have to color correct this image quite a bit to get that to stand out. Hmm. Uh, something else that I also usually do, I'm not sure if this is a good idea, it's because of that sphere that goes on top. Um, yeah, that's probably not a good idea, but we may remove some of the contrast. I feel like there's a little bit too much contrast. So I'll just gamma the image up so that we can get some nice shading and remove some of this contrast that we were getting. Right, so also what I wanted to do is kind of overall gratis down at the bottom. So I'm actually do that like that. Okay. Press D to disable the color corrections. I think I might have gone too far. So let's bring it back a little bit. So now this took care of the volcano. I think that might be a little too hot. So I might do the same thing. I might take the shuffle change this so we only pick up the green so if you look at it it's only the green portion and then we're gonna color correct the lava specifically so I'll select that press shift y press control and drag to just the noodles and then let's call this lava cc and we can color correct the lava specifically we can gamma it up so we can reduce some of the contrast so that it doesn't stand out as much especially some of the highlights I feel like some of the highlights are a little too bright to change the range for the highlights you can use that okay. so I think this helps bring it back a little bit Something cool that we could do, but I won't because this thing is in the way. Um, I could create a fake drop shadow around it since we have it. But the problem is that um, because the sphere goes in front of it, it's probably going to create trouble. So I will not do it. Um, what I think we could get is a little bit more contact shadow between this ledge and the ground because we do have an image of just the ledge here and we do have an image of just the ground so why don't we do that I'm gonna create this contact ground and this is gonna be this image I'm gonna shuffle the blue out. So I'm gonna go blue just to create that. And then I'm gonna do a in only inside. I should not delete it because it takes too much effort to edit it. And then this bezier will be here and here. If you select them and press C, it will cast cast them 
so you can make sure that you get straight edges and then I'm going to use that right so the alpha we get now color corrects that but we actually want to color correct the portion of the ground that touches it kind of like a fake drop shadow right so to do that we select this other pass and we do the uh, same thing so we can actually just copy and paste it and then we take the red portion here we do an in um, making sure that we do not have any animation okay making sure well Ideally, you would be able to make sure that it's uh, it's not that it's holding up during the animation. But we didn't render; I didn't render any frames for this yet. Okay. So then you can do an um, you can blur one of the two. So you can blur this image. Then you can do an out of that and that. So let's see what this has. What this does and shift X to change it so let's blur it okay this is the alpha we have okay so let's do an in actually um, if you press if you delete it do that chup, chup, chup. okay so yeah that's what I wanted to get we wanted to get this blurred version inside that which gives us that, which allows us to create a fake drop shadow around the ground. And we can use the size to change it. Don't over I wouldn't overdo it because it could make the ground look a little dirty, but it definitely can help in getting some fake contact shadow, which would be difficult to get in Maya software because there's no such thing as occlusion. So let's go over over the changes we did already. You see how you can make you can do a lot in Nuke. Nuke is very powerful. Okay. Let's see what else we can do. Oh yeah, we should probably save this. Nuke script. Um, I kind of want to get more contact shadow from those onto the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this pass and I'm going to mm, I'm going to take all the green stuff and then I'm going to take all the blue stuff so all the blue, all the green and then I'm going to take all the red stuff And then I'm gonna do some in operation. So I'm gonna want to take everything inside the red and all of those two. So I'm gonna plus those two to get this joint over. Okay. And then I'm gonna blur it. And I'm gonna do an in. So we're gonna get the kind of same drop shadow effect we wanted to do before. Okay. Then I'm gonna use this to create a fake contact. So posters, contact wall. Okay. Do it point five. And let's take that and let's shift Y. Okay. And you can see how the script can easily get a little complicated. So 
I tend to use backdrops a lot. Okay, so you see how the color correction... Oh, it's actually not working. What is... what happened? Oh, right, right, I disconnect, connect to the wrong one. That's what I was trying to do. Okay, so this helps get a little bit more contact. What you can also do is translate this image down a little bit. Um, so minus 10, so you can get a fake um, sense of light direction. Cool, right? Also, I think we can push the gradient onto the wall. So I'm going to take the same map that we have and I'm going to call it wall white red and I'm going to darken it and I'm going to probably do an in between that and a ramp so I'm going to do that and then do that and do shift y so what does this look like let's go to this ramp and let's move it around so you see how this allows us to create gradients really easily really nice now we're darkening the image but we can actually darken it and color it a little bit um, but I wouldn't go too far with it but I think this helps um, we could even get some of these contact shadows from the red posters onto the green posters um, because right now they're only onto the wall but we could also get them onto each other so why don't we do that this is going to be a little trickier but I think we need it because these two these posters are not really separating enough um, we may actually want to do the prior, the other color correction. So, we have these posters, we have these posters. So, we probably want to do let's see if there's any. So, these are on top. So the green. Uh, yeah, this might be a little weird. So the blue should cast a shadow. Oh boy. Ah, uh, yeah, this is probably not gonna be physically correct. But let's just do it and see what happens. So let's take that. Let's actually do that so that we ha don't have to worry about always being in the way. And then let's blur one of them. Okay. So see, this is not giving us exactly what we want. Maybe this will work. Okay. I'm using control and dragging to get this to work out. 
So I think we are getting some of it, but yeah, it's definitely not doing exactly what I wanted it to. So I think this may require a few steps. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I was just trying to get it in one step. One step. But when I made the ID mats, I didn't think through every single thing it was going to do. Um, it happens. So I like what that's doing. I think that's cool. I think probably it could be moved down a little bit. And I think that this is great, but it's only great with the screen left. So I'm actually going to probably do an in. And make sure that this is only inside of this screen left wall. Okay. Now for the screen right wall, we're actually probably going to need a whole different setup. So for the screen right wall, we actually probably will want this dude and that stuff. Okay. And then we probably will want to do the same thing, but we're probably going to want to invert that. Okay, so let's see what that does. Okay, so it's working well here, but it's not working well there. So we actually might need to uninvert that and just simply use a bezier here to specifically tell Nuke where we want this to happen. You can use control and drag to soften this bezier and all to turn on and off the visualization. So I guess that we probably wanted that there. Ah, it's okay. What we could also do is use the same method here rather than creating a ambient fake ambient occlusion. We could add a little bit of variety to the textures using those posters. So for example, if we want these to read a little darker, we can easily do that by selecting the green like that. And then doing an in. Put in that and that. Poster down. Poster and screen right down. Say point five. Let's see what that does. Okay, so we actually want um let me create a new base here. Press X to create a new base here. Actually, we want just this poster. Okay. So that we can separate these two from each other. Alright. Um, let's remove any animation. So you can see how quickly this can become a little complicated. So, what I usually suggest doing is press Tab type backdrop and this will create this tiny little friend of yours that you can uh, use to label things so for example 
we could come here and label all this stuff posters because all these maths do is generate maths for the posters, right? That's all it is doing. But if someone didn't know that, um, they might open the script and be like, what is this nightmare? Who did this? This is a combination. So, I could come here and drag this like that and then I could press control to drag it so we don't have to reposition everything okay and we could even give it a color if we wanted to and we call posters and then we make the text let's say 100 units big and we can make it um, Little yellow suggest posters maybe. See? So now someone who opens the script will see oh, okay, so I guess all this mess here is to get um, poster stuff. And also I mean renaming um, the nodes will go a long way. So this was the wall gradient, this was the posters contact wall. Yeah, I think we went too far with this one. Okay. Um let's see how many frames we got rendered so far. Oh, it finished, cool. So it's probably rendering ID max one now. Cool. So um, I think all the posters can come down a little bit actually. I think they're all a little too bright. So I think this disjoint here um, we may actually want another one of those. I think we may want posters overall down. Oops. Posters overall down. Can set this to point six six. Okay. Right now, because there's no color correction, it's gonna be happening to everything. But we're gonna go here and take these guys and we're gonna make space for some new guys here so again press control and drag this so that you don't have to worry about dragging other stuff and then we're gonna connect these guys to this image the reason why I prefer to have these noodles going all to the back, to back to the same image is because loading the same image multiple times uh, will slow down Nuke a lot so it's easier to have uh, the same image feeding into different things all the time even though it makes oops even though it makes crap the graph a little bit messier um, it's for a good reason it's for speed So we can move this down. Cool. Yeah, I think the posters being a little darker help with the read. Oh, but we have to run in over there. I think I already have a mat for that. Where is it? Is it one of you? Is it you? Yeah, it's you. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it there. Press Shift X. Okay. Well, actually, it shouldn't be an in, it should be an out. But I can easily invert it like that. So that it's an in, but inside the inverted of that. 
Cool. So I think I'll wait for the other renders to finish, and then I'm gonna go over some of the finishing touches um, later. Hopefully, this explains a little bit of how I like to approach my compositing in Nuke. So I think in the next pass, the next uh, lesson, I'll just go over the very, very finishing touches, the very things I do at the very end. Um,